ever think of buying good quality meat to buy zinc bajilac suitable solution for quality meat for you and your family consumption our comprehensive range of meat products include and four quarter we offer consistent value quality and service through animal grass fed and bred especially for this makes easy to cook all magical butchers are halal including for the first time in the golden whole lamb available only Choose on Caraba Avenue, Allowed opposite the Petrogas petrol station traffic lights. For inquiries and orders, please call 7688-688. Magellan Pooches, the home of quality meat and chicken products. Double price. Think of buying quality meat at a suitable price. Think Magilac is the only suitable for quality to you and for your consumption. Our comprehensive range of meat products include meat, beef slices, top side, knuckle, tenderloin, strip loin, and four quarter. For consistent value. time in Zambia, the new Mongolian whole lamb available in Majilak Bootes. Our visit Majilak Bootes on Karaba Avenue, special station traffic lights. For inquiries and orders, please call 7688-688. That is 7688-688. Majilak Bootes, the home of quality meat and chicken products at unbeatable prices. As you know, a phrase is a group of words that doesn't I forgot to tell him. Are you guys talking about money transfer to buy provisions? Yes. Don't you know about Baluwo? The phrase there is set what is out for. Baluwo is a service that your son can use to send provisions directly to you guys from the shop. talking about money transfer to buy provisions? Yes. yes. But don't you know about Baluo? Baluo? What is Baluo? Baluo is a service that your son can use to send provisions directly to you guys from the shop. And you don't have to worry about exchange rates. It's very simple. Just log on to baluo.com and shop or download the app on your phone. You can shop on the website or using the app to buy online. These are key messages from the Ministry of Basic and Secondary Education on the coronavirus. Dear parents, keep children at home at all times. 
Avoid sending children to shops and markets. Do not engage children in petty trading on the streets. Allow children to play within the confines of the home. Limit visitors into your homes. Adhere to COVID-19 health precautions and guidelines. Schools are closed, but learning continues. Dear teachers, you are encouraged to desist from all forms of group activities involving students. All school premises should remain closed and not to be used for any other purpose. Thank you. Good day, wonderful viewers. I am Ami Jaite, your teacher who is back again. Today, I will be teaching on phrasal verbs. And uh, as you already know, a phrasal verb is a phrase that consists of a verb, of a, an I an either or both of a preposition or adverb that has idiomatic meaning. As you know, a phrase is a group of words that does not make sense, except if it is completed. Now we are saying that a phrasal verb is a phrase that consists of a verb, an either or both of a preposition, or an adverb put together that has a different meaning. It has an idiomatic meaning. We are going to look at examples of phrasal verbs. The first example we have is, we set out for the journey. We set out for the journey. The phrase there is set out for. Set out for cannot be completed if it is not put together with other words. So we are looking at the word set out for, and the meaning of set out for is to begin or start. So when we say that, we set out for the journey in the morning, it means that we began the journey or we started the journey. So set out for means to begin or to start something. Number two, he made away with my bicycle. Made in away with my bicycle. If made away is put alone, it is incomplete. But now we are to look at it in a sentence form by saying he made away with my bicycle so that could mean he stole my bicycle. If Lamin made away with the teacher's pen, if Fatu made away with Ramatulai's book, it means they stole the very thing that we are talking about. The third one now, which is fall back on. If you fall back on someone, it means you are highly relying on the person. It means you are depending on the person. So if we say that, we can always fall back on Amadou for help. If we can't get anyone, it means that we can always rely on Amadou. It means that we will depend on Amadou. These are examples of phrasal verbs that we just talked about. 
Now we are going to introduce you to more phrasal verbs and their interpretations. That is their meaning. We will look at the first one. T of. T of is the same as starting something, beginning something, commencing something, or setting out for something. So T of, if it is put in a sentence, could mean to begin, like I said, to start, to commence, or to set out. We will look at a second one, which is to blow up. To blow up. To blow up means to lose one's temper, to exaggerate, to explode. So when you blow up, when you blow up beyond reasonable proportion, it means you have exaggerated. And when you blow up having a discussion with someone, it means you lose your temper. And when you blow up also, means you have exploded. We are going to look at the next one, which is to comply with. Complying with something means agreeing to that thing, means consenting to it, means conforming to it. So when you comply with something, it means all of the above. The next one is to make do with, to make do with, which means to cope, to manage, to see clearly, to understand, to boast, to extinguish. We have the next one, to, um, to make up. To make up. When you make up something, it means you fabricate, you build, you create, you decorate. The next one is to guard against. To guard against. Like, let's guard ourselves against the coronavirus. To guard against means to protect to prevent, to avoid. So all these words could mean guarding against. We have the next one, to deal in. Dealing in could be dealing in trade. It means to engage in a specific business. So dealing in means a transaction that one does. Call on. We are calling on the general public. It means we are inviting. The next is to put off. To put off means to change to a later date, like postponing, to hold on. To hold on means to wait, to stay up, to relax, to stop, to cut down. Cutting down the price could mean to reduce, minimizing, to a lower price. Find out. Find out could mean to detect, investigate, discover, to unravel, or scrutinize. We will still continue with the list. Pull down. Pulling down something means to demolish. It means to destroy. Yes. We have the next one. Wear out. When we wear out, when something wear out, it means it fades. To lose quality or to lose newness. Next on our list is to look after. Looking after 
means taking care, cater, or raise. The next is to put up with. To put up with means to cope with, to endure, to tolerate. The next is to jumble up. When you jumble up things, means you mix things up. You misarrange things. You confuse things. The last one we have is to own up. When you own up to your crime, it means you admit, you agree, and you confess. So these are the examples of phrasal verbs that we have. As you can see, all these phrasal verbs have their different interpretations. We are going to move to more phrasal verbs in sentences. These ones are going to be put in sentences. And the first one we have is, they deal in hi-fi and video equipment. They deal in hi-fi and video equipment. So dealing in is the word there. So you are asked to look for the meaning of deal in. And the answer is, dealing in means engage in. When you deal in something, it means you engage in that thing. The second one is, the chairman called on the guest speaker to address the gathering. The chairman called on the guest speaker to address the gathering. It means the chairman invited the guest speaker to address the gathering. The next one. The child mixed up the materials in the bedroom. It means the child scattered. It means the child confused. It means the child misarranged. The next one is, the government has cut down traveling expenses. The government has cut down traveling expenses. The phrasal verb there is to cut down. Now the answer to that question is, reduce, it means the government has reduced, or minimize traveling expenses. The fifth, Every student is advised to comply with the school rules and regulation. It means every student is advised to agree or to observe, abide by the school rules and regulation of the school. We will also look at collocation. Collocation which means words that must go together all the time. It means one part cannot go without the other. As one is mentioned, the next one should follow. The first one we have embezzlement. What do we embezzle? We embezzle fun. So embezzlement cannot be mentioned without fun. So that is why in collocation, as soon as the first word is mentioned, Candidates should be able to know the word that should follow next. We have the next one. Round table. Round table. Round table meeting. Round table conference. So these are some of the words that go with round table. We move to the next one. Object. Object what? Object poverty. As soon as object is mentioned, we definitely should know what should follow. Anywhere object is mentioned, what follows is poverty. We move to the next one, which says, collocation as it relates to phrasal verbs simply means an idiomatic usage that a certain proposition must go with certain verb with fixed meaning. As a result, example of collocation as phrasal verbs. 
round up. If you are rounded up by the police, it means you are arrested. Round off. I want to round off my lesson. It means I want to conclude. Deal out. Dealing out means to say out, like said out. Deal with. Deal, I will deal with you. Most often you have heard your teacher saying, I will deal with you severely. It means that I will punish you. Disgusted with. I am disgusted with your attitude. It means I am fed up with. I'm angry with your attitude. Call for. If the government is calling for, um, uh, 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 calling for people, for proposals, calling for proposals, it means and the demands. Call at. You visit. Call in. Call in means to enter. Blame for. When you are blamed for something, it means you are condemned. Some the next is you are angry with somebody. You agree to something. Angry with somebody. Angry at something. You cannot tell people I am angry at you. You are angry at something, but you are angry with someone. Compare with. You compare with somebody, and you compare to something. Differ from. You differ from opinion. Differ with somebody. You meddle with somebody and meddle in something. You protest against and you wait upon somebody. Don't say I am waiting for you. You wait upon somebody. We are going to look at um, We are going to look at examples of collocations in sentences. The first one we have is, the deal has fallen. The deal has fallen. We have options A, B, C, and D. The first option we have is A, which is through. The second option is off. The third one is on, and the fourth one is with. So we are going to look at the options and see which one is most suitable to, to, to fill the space in the question. The deal has fallen through. The deal has fallen off. The deal has fallen on and the deal has fallen with. If you look at the options, you will realize that option B, which is off, is more suitable. The second one, which says, she prefers oranges, thus mangoes. She prefers oranges, thus mangoes. We have A, to. B with, C done, and D by. Prefer goes with something, which is one of the options there. So I'm going to read out the options and see which one is the right answer. C prefer oranges to mangoes. C prefer oranges with mangoes. She prefer oranges than mangoes. And she prefer oranges by mangoes. So she prefer oranges goes with two. Pref the word prefer 
goes with the preposition to. So she prefer oranges to mangoes is the right answer there. Number three. In austere period, one has to cut thus one's expenses. In austere periods, one has to cut thus one's expenses. Cut is the word we are looking at. So we have cut down, cut off, cut in, and cut low. So looking at the options, cut down is the right answer. In austere period, one has to cut down one's expenses. The fourth one now. We will be rounding dust by 6 o'clock. We will be rounding dust by 6 o'clock. The options are rounding down, rounding up, rounding off, and rounding off. So the right answer is rounding up by 6 o'clock. The last one. Students should abide thus the school rules and regulation. Students should abide with the school rules and regulation. Students should abide by the school rules and regulation. Students should abide on the school rules and regulations. Students should abide to the school rules and regulations. The right answer is abide by. Students should abide by the school rules and regulations. This takes us to the end of phrasal verbs and um, collocations. I hope you have now understood better what phrasal verbs are. We will be looking at figure of speech. Um, we will look at the start with the definition. And the definition which states that um, a figure of speech or a literary device, that is to say figures of speech are otherwise called literary devices. They are a group of words or expressions that have different meaning from their literal meaning. It means if you look at them literally, the meaning they suggest and, and their actual meaning are not the same. They require some form of interpretations in order for one to know their meaning. So just to summarily say, um, figures of speech are words or expressions that have different meaning from their literal meaning. We will look at few examinable literary devices, not all of them, but we are looking at that aspect that comes in the examination. So the few that we have are simile, metaphor, personification, hyperbole, rhetorical question, euphemism, and irony. Today we are only going to look at the seven. We will start with simile. As you know, people have different ways of writing their spelling. Some will write smile, some will write simile as in L-E-Y, but just to tell you, the correct spelling is S-I-M-I-L-E. Now when you look at simile, it says it's a comparison of unlike things using as or like. What we are saying is that two unlike things are compared with the use of as or like. So in any exam, in any assessment, or any work that you see a statement that is co comparing two unlike things using as or using like should be a simile. We are going to give you a few examples that will really make you understand 
or distinguished simile from other devices that we will be discussing. Now, first example of simile is, the class is as quiet as a graveyard. The class is as quiet as a graveyard. You have seen the as, you have seen two as in the statement that I just mentioned. You have seen an adjective in the middle. So we are trying to compare the class and the graveyard. We are trying to say that the class is as quiet as the graveyard that is comparing the classroom situation. How quiet the classroom situation is to how quiet a graveyard is. So therefore, this statement is a simile. We will look at the second example. The class prefect behave like a king. The class prefect behaves like a king. What are we comparing here? We are comparing the class prefect and a king. It means the class prefect behavior is just like the behavior of a king. So simile is also used in that expression. Our third example is Lamin's head is as big as a jar. We are comparing what? Lamin's head to that of a jar. Lamin's head here is compared to how big a jar is. So simile is used in that expression. Again, the antelope flies like an aeroplane. What are we comparing in this statement? We are comparing an antelope, comparing it with an aeroplane. We are saying that the, aero, the antelope flies like the way the aeroplane flies. So when we compare the antelope and the aeroplane as two unlike terms, using as, so simile is used. We will look at our last example on the simile, which is, he jumped like a frog. He jumps like a frog. If I say booba jumps like a frog in the class, it means I am comparing booba to a frog using what like. So with these examples that I have given, you can all bear me witness that Two unlike terms, two unlike things are compared. Like the classroom and the graveyard are two compared things. The class perfect and the king are two unlike terms. Lamin jumping like he jumps and to, to the way the frog jump are unlike terms. But we are trying to compare all these using as or like. So to show you, simile is a comparison of two things using as or like. We will now move to our second figures of speech, the metaphor. Now what is a metaphor? That one also, students have different ways of spelling it, so you take note of the spelling. It's a metaphor, not a metaphor, like some people will put th there. So metaphor here is a um, a direct comparison of two things, if you look at it very well, it's just like the opposite of simile, where simile is the indirect comparison of two unlike things, metaphor is the direct comparison of two things without the use of as or like. It also includes some idiomatic expressions. We will look at our first example. Mustafa is a lion. If I say Mustafa is like a lion, then the statement will be a simile. But when I say Mustafa is a lion, it means I'm directly comparing Mustafa and a lion. Second example, she is the apple of my eyes, which we also said it includes some idioms. Apple of my eyes also means something else. So we are comparing she 
to an apple. Not saying she is like the apple of my eye, but she is. That is why we have metaphor as the direct inter um, comparison of two things without the use of us or like. He is a star. Not he is behaving like a star. He is a star. Her long hair was a flowing golden river. We did not say her long hair was like a flowing golden river, but her long hair was a flowing golden river. It means we are directly comparing without using as or like. Modo's eyes were eyes as he stared at me. Not saying Modo's eyes were like eyes as he stared at me, but this is a direct statement as in Modo's eyes were eyes as he stared at me. So looking at simile on the other hand and metaphor here, you can realize that they are like opposite. Metaphor compares directly without using as or like, but simile compares indirectly with the use of as or like. We will still move to another literary device, which is called personification. What is a personification? Personification is the use of human qualities to inanimate objects. What are we trying to say? When you take human attributes, things that a human being can do, and you now relate it to inanimate objects, it means you are personifying them. Example. The wind sweeps our compound every morning. What is sweeping and who does it? Sweeping is a human attribute. Now when you take sweep, sweeping and attribute it to the wind, it means you are personifying the wind. So when human qualities are given to inanimate objects, personification is the device used there. Second example, the pen, dancing, the pen dances furiously on the paper. Who dances? Well, human dances. But now when you are taking an ordinary pen and you are attributing dancing to the pen, it means you are personifying the pen. So when the pen dances, it's a personification because dancing is an a human attribute. We will look at the next one. The wind whistles at me. Again, the wind, which is non-human. When the wind whistles, whistle is done by human being, as in So when the wind whistles, when we take whistling, which is a human attribute, and give it to the wind, it means we are personifying the wind. The next one we have. Death has visited my grandmother six years ago. Visited. Visited here is the human attribute. But we are now taking the visited and attributing it to death. It means we are personifying death. So when human attributes are given to inanimate objects, personification is used there. Our fifth example, the sun peeped at my window. Peeping is a human attribute. Now when we take the peeping and attribute it to the sun, it means we are personifying the sun. These are the examples we have on the personification. Now, taking you from the top, simile is the indirect comparison of two things with the use of as or like. Metaphor is the direct comparison of two things without the use of as or like. Now, personification is given human qualities to inanimate objects. They are not the same. So at this point, if you are given any statement, 
you should be able to distinguish so far with the three that we have dealt with. We will now move to our fourth one, fourth device, which is called hyperbole. Hyperbole. Hyperbole is a deliberate exaggeration of a statement for emphasis. When you um, reason things beyond, um, when you blow up things beyond reasonable proportion, where small things are made to appear big, it means you are exaggerating. And the reason why people exaggerate is to lay emphasis on that. This, I can say, are common um, devices that are used by people, especially women. First example, the whole Gambia attended his naming ceremony. Well, from this statement, we have realized that no matter the amount of people there cannot be equivalent to the whole population of the Gambia. So when the whole Gambia attended his um, naming ceremony, it means we are exaggerating. Exaggerating something that could have been said. Many people attended the naming ceremony, but that many now is, um, um, is exaggerated to the whole Gambia. So this is to show you that we, we exaggerate for emphasis. The second example, he was so thirsty that he could drink the whole river. No matter how thirsty you are, well, you cannot drink the entire river as you cannot finish the water in the river. So we can realize that he was so thirsty, very, very thirsty. So to emphasize that, we said that he was so thirsty that he could drink the whole river. The third example. When he shouted, the whole world heard about it. The whole world cannot hear about it. But we are exaggerating for emphasis. Again. Lamin's teeth are sharper than razor. No matter how sharp Lamin's teeth are, they can never be sharper than razor. Just to tell you that we are emphasizing how sharp Lamin's, Lamin's teeth are. Fifth, New York is the wall. No matter how beautiful and amazing New York is, it cannot be the wall. It means we are emphasizing. It means we are exaggerating. Good. We will move to our fifth literary device, which is a rhetorical question. Now, a rhetorical question is a question with an obvious answer. Therefore, it does not require any answer. The one reading out the rhetorical question definitely know that he does not, um, he's not expecting any answer from anyone. Now, rhetorical questions can be easily identified with the question mark at the end. With all the seven, it is the only one that has a question mark at the end. And the first question is, who knows tomorrow? These are questions that don't require any answer because the answer is obvious to everybody. Who wants to be poor? No one, so we are not requiring any answer there as the answer is also obvious. Who wants to die? That is a rhetorical question. Are you not from the womb of a woman? When you ask these questions, you require no answer. Have I not helped you enough? This one also require no answer. So you should know that a rhetorical question is a question with an obvious answer known to everybody. 
Therefore, it requires no answer. At this point, you should be able to distinguish from where we started to where we are now. And to continue, we will move with euphemism. Euphemism. A euphemism is an expression where unpleasant things are said in a pleasant way. Or it is a mild way of expressing an unpleasant situation. When situations are unpleasant, you try to say them in a very nice way so that the receiver does not get offended. It means you are euphemizing. Example, I want to ease myself. Rather than saying, I am going to the toilet. But you can just nicely say it, I want to ease myself. The second one, she has been put in a family way. When someone is pregnant, you can just nicely say, she has been put in a family way, rather than saying, she is impregnated. Number three, he is economical to the truth. When an elder is talking, and maybe you realize that the person is not speaking the truth, you can just nicely and mildly say, he is economical to the truth. Again, his grandfather has kicked the bucket since last year. The grandfather has died. But you can say, the grandfa his grandfather has kicked the bucket in a nice and a mild way. Again, your husband is the gentleman of the road. You cannot face someone's husband and say, your husband is a thief. But you can just nicely tell the person, your husband is the gentleman of the road. In a very nice way. So that the person receiving the information will not be offended. Good. We will move to the seventh, which is called irony. Not irony but irony. An irony is an expression that is opposite to the literal meaning. Meaning you expect something to happen in a certain way and the unexpected happen. It means irony is used. Example, what a good student. These are two different statements put together. If you say what a good student, we expect a positive um, continuation. But you just said what a good student, he failed all his subjects. So what a good student, he failed all his subjects. It has another meaning which means that he is not at all a good student. Example two, she is so intelligent that she cannot spell her name. If you are so intelligent that you cannot spell your name, it means you are a dull student. It means you are not bright. So this statement has another meaning, another meaning. We will look at the third one. What a lucky man. His house is being robbed by thieves. Is he lucky? He's not lucky anymore, since the thieves robbed everything in his house. The fourth one, what a responsible husband. His children are starving to death. Is he responsible? No. So this has another meaning. The fifth one. That was a comprehensive lesson. No student understood. If the lesson is comprehensive, students should be able to understand. Or if no student understood, it means the lesson is not comprehensive. 
So this is what takes us to the examples of irony. I know that you will be able to distinguish between simile, metaphor, personification, rhetorical question, irony, euphemism. You should be able to know anywhere they appear in any sentence. You should be able to know the device that it belongs to. Before we take a leave of you, we would like to move on with class exercise to strengthen your understanding. And the instruction is, underline and identify the figure of speech used in each of the following statements. The first one, he was so thirsty that he could drink the whole river. If you look at this device, it is not a simile, it is not a metaphor, it's not an irony, but what we can see in the statement is exaggeration. And when you exaggerate, hyperbole is the right answer there. The second one, when he shouted, the whole world heard about it. It means also, we are blowing things beyond reasonable proportion. The whole world cannot hear a, a, a shout of an individual. It means we are exaggerating. So therefore the answer there is hyperbole. Number three, lamen states are sharper than rezo. Lamen state can never be sharper than a rezo. That one also, it means we are exaggerating. Hyperbole is used again. She is so intelligent that she cannot spell her name. She is so intelligent that she cannot spell her name. It's irony. As we can see that the statement has another literal meaning. What a lucky man. His house is being robbed by thieves. Again, irony is used. What a responsible husband. His children are starving to death. Again, irony is used there. Number seven, she has been put in a family way. She has been put in a family way. This statement is a euphemism because it's a mild way or is a nice way of saying something unpleasant. He is economical to the truth. It means he is not speaking the truth. Euphemism is used there. His grandfather has kicked the bucket since last year. Euphemism is also used there. Before we take a leave of you, we have an assignment that you are expected to do as you're sitting at home. And the instruction for the ex assignment is um, that you give two examples of each of the following devices or figure of, figure of speech. The first one is a personification. You should give us two examples of personification after understanding all about it. You give us two examples of metaphor, two examples of simile, irony, euphemism, hyperbole, when we meet again, before doing anything, we will look at the two examples that you have. Bye for now, and I hope you have enjoyed the lesson. Always try to wash your hands with clean water, use sanitizers, and also um, consider all the precautionary measures that are put in place for us all to fight the coronavirus. Remember to always tune into your TV to follow the lessons as they will be very beneficial to you. Thank you. Hello viewers, these are key messages from the Ministry of Basic and Secondary Education on the coronavirus. Dear parents, keep children at home at all times. 
avoid sending children to shops and markets. Do not engage children in petty trading on the streets and garages. Allow children to play within the confines of the home. Limit visitors into your homes. Adhere to COVID-19 health precautions and guidelines. Schools are closed, but learning continues. Dear teachers, you are encouraged to desist from all forms of group activities involving students. All school premises should remain closed and not to be used for any other purpose. Thank you. Communication, connectivity is everything. We ensure that the links never sleep. Quantities and qualities, all in our data service, providing efficient, reliable voice and data service. We believe if you're not up to speed, then you're going backwards. Communications have to flow as fast as the speed of light. Whatever business you're in, having someone who understands your needs is critical. That is why we just don't offer you technology, we offer you solutions. Enjoy Gamsel's internet broadband anytime, anywhere. Your national operator, Gamsel Yaibarom. I get it. Okay, million, I'm Albaga. Albaga, important. Yo, I'm not transfer. Yeah, transfer. Okay. What's up? You see, I'm not a Sorry. I get it. Million, bro. Albaga. Albaga. But Allah sabi so tariya. Ah, but no more kids are not going to be a tariya. Ah, just now you are forest the bureau. Gambia don't come now to be a bureau. Ah. Fifty-six branches more so the Gambia jam. Huh? Ah. Gambia kono ari Gambia bantala bankol. Unka kono kia bere. Kono sifa sifa for falindiro for nyadi lafta meme na kodi to koto unko di maro. Jam num number one di nyonda. And num fana nata another enterprise is totally. Wola wola nyindi ko. Domoro fana unko fana be fira le le daddy man. Domoro di fana beteat. Gambia dau da ya longa kufa kendo sotale di. Ha e wamo e odi ha. Apelenda. Ni waka ni na lafta ni elen kendo le binaji. Ya le buka ni na kuola. Ha 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 ha. Ya londel chosa no lo. Abarka. Gamtel G Fiber, now you can enjoy super fast internet in gigabytes. G Fiber is affordable, stable, secured, and accessible to homes, businesses, and enterprises. With Gamtel G Fiber, the future is speed. Gamtel, creating a brighter future in communication.
Jarang nyilat domo rokal di asen. Boy, jangan sikit restoran. Saya nak kau beli nak dimbal. Nimba domo rokal jangan. Domo rokal seniata, adiata, topo toro fanang kenda ma bigi. Luntan during, tamala, abeka domo rokal jangan. Adi manda wala de. Teka we bigi le, anim fanang kafe di jang ikono efa. Eka apa minat kau pastry anim bakery. Iko fanam beka ni, bade lomba, conference lomba, workshop lomba, ye four thousand ni lom dunia kono. Domoro better ma, ni lom international lo tewoda number one. Aman ke bade domo la jang dama. Esa domo jang is atari ya. Awo muku bandi. Sa na kuwa sa futendi. E oto sa na kuwa be musikas restaurant. Dapa na jang na muiyat ni manje jorombi jang. Aban. Musikas restaurant known for best quality food and customer satisfaction.